Hi, let's do some geometric stuff now. Let me uh, get this up. So uh, six and seven, I already did. And then I realized the video wasn't recording. So I already have everything written down. Here's six. You can use Desmos to graph these things. Desmos is just fine with having, you know, x equals instead of y equals. Your calculator wouldn't like this, but Desmos is okay. We're most used to integrating with respect to y. So with this as the upper, I mean, with respect to x, with this as the upper function and this as the lower function. If we wanted that, we'd have to rewrite both these curves, y equals x to the one third, y equals x to the one half. I didn't see any advantage to that. y squared is the right curve, y cubed is the left curve. So our boundary goes from y equals zero to y equals one. If you are, uh, if you're struggling with that at all, you can, as far as I'm concerned, just use Desmos. I'm trying to test your calculus, not your ability to set equations equal to each other. So we integrate from zero to one. There's nothing really special about this integration y squared to one third y cubed, y cubed to one fourth y to the fourth, stick in one, stick in zero, we get this. The next problem, um, let me, let me find it for you. The next problem is this. And if you go to Desmos and look at these, y equals x squared, y equals 2 minus x, and the x-axis, y equals 0. This is the region we're looking at. If you tried to integrate with respect to x, you would run into trouble. You could do it, but your upper curve would change. Here, our upper curve is x squared. Here, our upper curve is two minus x. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to find this area where the upper curve is x squared, and then find this area where the upper curve is two minus x, and add those areas together. What's probably easier is to integrate with respect to y, because this is always the right curve. This is always the left curve. You don't have that switch. To do that, you do have to rewrite both of these equations in terms of y. 
And then it's the right curve minus the left curve. Um, the limits of integration. Now this line is y equals zero. The upper limit of this region is y equals one. So we're integrating from zero to one and we take this integral. Nothing, uh, nothing complicated here, I hope. We plug in one, we plug in zero, we subtract. If I've done my arithmetic correctly, we get five sixths. Set up, but do not evaluate an integral representing a surface area. So what surface area? Well, get rid of all of this. X, Y equals one. That's this curve from X equals one to X equals two. So this curve, and we are rotating it around the y axis. So if we draw a line from the axis of rotation to the curve, that line is horizontal meaning that everything has to be um, given with respect to y. So xy equals one is x equals one divided by y. And it's no use Knowing, well, obviously it's useful, but what I'm trying to say is that we are given limits in terms of x, but we need our limits of integration to be in terms of y. So, we can get that using this formula when x equals one, y equals one. When x equals two, y equals one half. So the integral from one half to one of two times pi times this distance times the square root of one plus the derivative. So x equals y to the negative first. The derivative is negative y to the negative second, which is negative one over y squared. And that derivative must itself be squared. And we could simplify this a little. It 
inside the square root. Now the arc length formula. So y equals x squared plus one from two to five. This is a very plug and play problem. There aren't really any complications. The derivative is 2x. You've got the integral from 2 to 5 of the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. Maybe that's enough for this video. There are, I think, two more geometric problems. They can get their own video.